Goedemorgen. My goal is to cool down 200 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius as much as possible in 5 minutes. And there were some problems along the way. To begin, we need to think of a good approach to cool down the water quickly. The most basic approach would be to heat up the water, pour 200 milliliters in the beaker and just let it sit. He's just standing there. Start the timer at 80 degrees Celsius, 5 minutes later, and wow, who would have guessed that, the water is colder than it was before. But we can do better, instead of letting it sit exposed to the air, I could chuck it in a fridge, 5 minutes later, somewhat colder water, wow. But these results are bad, not only does the water not cool down by a lot, this method turns out not to actually be very scientific. It really isn't that precise and the results fluctuate by a lot. So I decided to explore my options. As luck would have it, my school was going to hold an open house to attract students. And the chemistry department decided to do a demonstration with dry ice. A perfect opportunity. And thus I used leverage and advanced multi-layer social manipulation to secure a position at this demonstration. But before we get into that... What is dry ice anyway? Well, it is this right here. It doesn't look that special, but it is actually frozen CO2 at a temperature of minus 80 degrees Celsius. That's why, if you drop it in some water, it makes lots of smoke, which is just mostly water vapor. It also doesn't melt into liquid. Instead, it sublimates into CO2 at atmospheric pressure as can be seen in this phase diagram. However, since I want my water to stay as pure as possible, I can't just chuck it in because dry ice emits CO2 which acidifies the water changing its composition. It would also result in water splashing everywhere, which would lower the amount of water in the beaker, invalidating the results. That is why I decided to use a cooling bath. But as water freezes at zero degrees, and I would like the ice bath to be as close to the melting point of dry ice as possible, I used acetone, which should produce a cooling buff at around minus 78 degrees Celsius, according to Wikipedia, which is the most trustworthy source. So here we are, and first of all, we start by taking the beaker of water out of the water bath, which has been set to 80 degrees. It turns out that the explosion was caused partially by leftover water around the beaker. The reason this water was there is because the heating method was of course a water bath, which meant that some of the water was still left over and the vast change in temperature resulted in the dry ice sublimating very quickly. We quickly find that our camera angle is actually shit because people keep going in front of the flipping camera. And as you can see, I'm also drawing the setup at the same time. And I am using two thermometers here, linked up to my laptop. One measures the temperature of the water, which is changing very rapidly, as you can see. And the other temperature sensor is measuring the temperature of the cooling bath. And as you can see, the lowest line in the graph isn't actually going up, which we would expect because, of course, the heat of the water would also go into the cooling bath, increasing its temperature. This is because I then found out that the temperature sensor I was using can only go to minus 50 degrees Celsius. <sighs> so after all of that, a couple of changes had to be made. One, get a thermometer that can actually measure below minus 50 degrees Celsius. 2. Limit the extent of the explosion by wiping off any water from the edges of the beaker. And 3. Fixing the camera angle. And then in the following hour, a frenzy ensued as multiple people looked around the school for a better thermometer. The answer proved to be a thermocouple, which could handle the larger temperature ranges. Now I had to figure out how it worked. This took another hour, as it wasn't compatible with the software I was using, 
and for some reason one wire of the thermocouple couldn't go below minus 27.6 degrees celsius and the other one couldn't go above 27.6 degrees celsius annoying and after changing the position of my camera hopefully all problems are resolved and it is finally time for the second run <laughs> I solved the problem with the limited range of the thermometers uh, by using both the thermocouple and the original thermometers I was uh, using and setting a baseline temperature at room temperature with a water bath where I had one of the thermometers in it and one of the wires of the thermocouple. This was necessary because the thermocouple actually measures a difference in temperature and not an absolute value. And with this method I could cover the entire temperature range of the experiment as above minus 27.6 degrees celsius I would just use the original ther thermometer I was using and below it I would switch over to the thermocouple I am going to shut up now as the full 5 minutes play out If you're not interested in the, seeing the full experiment you can skip to about 10 minutes and 30 seconds
and here you can see the graph for the thermometers for the final run and as you can see the line that is most stable is the calibration temperature at around room temperature and you can see from the other line that the temperature started at just above 80 degrees celsius and then started dropping incredibly quickly and over the course of the five minutes proceeded to around minus 30 degrees celsius and so it turned out the thermocouple actually wasn't necessary, which I'm sure all the people that uh, helped me and spent some time looking around for it very much appreciate. And so here are the precise values of the temperatures. And I also calculated the amount of energy that the water lost during that time, which as you can see is quite a significant amount. But that was of course to be expected as the dry bath was quite cold. And of course this isn't actually the furthest you can go there is actually another step which is liquid nitrogen and as this was a competition i hope no one was able to secure that seeing as i already got to minus 30 degrees celsius within those five minutes using liquid nitrogen and liquid helium would re will require some pretty advanced methods of measuring the temperature of the water which would be ice at that point with liquid nitrogen you probably get some flash freezing which would make measuring the temperature of it quite hard. Thank you so much for watching. If you really liked it then please check out my other stuff. You can find it on my channel. And also maybe check out my website. Pretty please.